Hi, my name is Kelly Gorbatenko. I am a forward on the Wisconsin women's hockey team. Yeah, something in high school that I did uh, to stand out was mainly the biggest things I try to focus on were things I can control. And those were, you know, my work ethic, my passion, my intensity in practice, you know, and trying to improve myself as much as I could. Um, yeah, I, I focused on a lot on improving on the ice. Uh, I did a lot of things at home. I also did a lot of video. Uh, that really helped me see the game from a different perspective. And that was something a lot of people didn't really do. So I was able to kind of see things I did well and things I didn't. I also watched a lot of people from the pros and see what they were really good at. And that was kind of something that I really got a lot of use out of. Some of my early mentors were obviously my, my parents, but I also had an older brother. He's two years older. He is the reason I started playing hockey. He was obviously much better, bigger, stronger, uh, faster than I was. And he had this quote and one of the advice he said was, um, when you go the extra mile, it's never too crowded. And that was something that I kind of, that kind of really stuck with me and something that became kind of my mantra. And so I would always put in the extra work where I could because um, I, you know, he, he trailblazed a lot for me. And, um, you know, if I wanted to be great, I had to do things that others weren't, weren't going to do. So that was something that, that I used, you know, as motivation and that I would, uh, that I remembered and, try to be as consistent as possible. I think the hardest challenge in high school that I faced was not being complacent. There were a lot of years where, you know, I was a top player and there weren't a lot of people pushing me at some practices, but, you know, I went from chasing the pace car to being the pace car. And that was something that I had to get comfortable with doing. And, but I would set what we used to call micro goals. And I would, so each practice I'd be like, I want to score 10 goals. I want to win every single race. I want to try this new move I'm working on. And that would help keep me focused and progressing in my skill set. That was really big. And I found a lot of growth out of that. I didn't want to slow down the pace, you know, to my teammates pace, but raise it so that they would also improve. I think it was my attitude around my teammates was a big one, but also the hard work that I put in, you know, whether we're winning by five or losing, I wouldn't give up. And the coaches noticed that that was one of the things that they said is that it doesn't matter the score. I was consistent throughout the game. I wouldn't get lazy. I wouldn't, you know, give up when it got tough. I would, you know, be a positive teammate. I would put in the work. And that was something that they saw as unique. And that was something that made me stand out in my recruiting process. What I saw in Wisconsin that really fit me was the academics are great here. It was close to home, but I knew I was going to be challenged every day because some of the players I'm playing with are competing at the highest level for Team USA. And I knew that they were going to push me. And that was something that was really appealing to me. Um, you know, somebody who may be pursuing you know, D1 sports and athletics, the biggest thing is you have to be confident. Going into the recruiting process, there's a lot of people that may doubt you, that may not think you're you're good enough, but you have to be confident in yourself and, and not believe and not let that doubt seek into your mind. If you if a D1 scholarship's your goal, you have to create a plan of attack. You you have to work backwards. If D1's a goal, then you have to work backwards and find out what you're gonna do today to reach that goal. You can't do ordinary things and expect unique results. So if you really want it, you have to match your actions with that passion. Yeah, I think something that my teammates and I do to get the results and the success our team has is we compete with each other. Yes, we're teammates, but in practice, we're battling like we're playing against each other because you practice how you play and everybody wants to be the best in their sport. So when we're competing, we all, it's a mutual, um, mutual gain. So that's something that we do, but we're also cheering each other on. When we're in the rate room, you know, somebody's left and everybody's cheering for them. Everybody's rooting them on. So we all just want the best for each other and we're willing to push each other in that way so that we have the best team success possible. After my first season of college hockey, I had some time to reflect and, and the, some things that I wish I knew back then was that nothing is going to be handed to you. 
uh, you have to surround yourself with people that are better than you. Senior year, you know, I was at the top of my team and I didn't really have many people pushing me. So I didn't think I had as much growth as I possibly could have. But I had the most growth and I got it so much better when I was around people that were better than I was. And I was able to learn from them and just pick their brain on what helped them become so successful. It's a lot easier to, to push yourself when you're chasing somebody versus running alone. So I would wish I knew that, you know, to surround myself with people better than I am and kind of have that humility to realize that I'm not the best, but I want to get better. Coming into a national championship team was, it was very motivating because in the summer we would see the national championship poster that was in the hallway. Every time we'd walk to the rink, I'd see it. Then there were all these festivities in the off season and the first game they were doing the banner raising. So to not be part of that was, was uh, left some hunger in your belly for uh, to get one of your own. So that motivated the entire off season, but also the support of the people that have won it, they knew what it took. And each day they would push us because we now have a target on our backs going into the season and everybody wants to, to beat Wisconsin. So it was definitely a challenge. And then playing in the playoffs this year, we had great leadership, uh, people that knew what we needed to do to win. And they really helped lead us in the right direction. And unfortunately we fell one goal short of a national championship, but we have that and all have that experience that we can pass on to the next group. And now we know what we need to do and what we did this year wasn't, wasn't good enough. So now it's again, more motivation going into the off season. Yeah. The NIL opportunities have been great. They have uh, just started to kind of dip their toe into women's hockey. They're a bit newer, but a lot of people, my teammates have experienced some NIL. I've experienced some other NIL deals as well. And it's just a great opportunity that we've been given. You know, we've worked hard to be as successful as we can, and we've earned the right to be compensated on that part. Um, the only thing I focus on with NIL is to not deter me from my goals. I have set, you know, my priorities. I want to be a really successful athlete and really successful academically. And NIL is kind of a byproduct of those two things. So I just try to put my priorities in order and um, yeah, and spend my time that aligns with, you know, my values and my priorities. But it's, uh, it's nice to be kind of compensated for your athletic achievements.